Hey everybody, welcome back to Microbiology. Today we're going to go through the pathogenesis of bacteria. So um, we should know Koch's postulate where um, an organism should be able to um, infect another um, organism or a host and that needs to be isolated and if it's injected into um, another host it needs to be um, able to replicate and also um, induce an illness in the second host. So gene coding is expressed during the infection and the infection cycle is what's um, important to know. So first um, it's, it's known as a chain. So the infectious agent um, has to be transmitted and it can be transmitted through a whole host of things. So it can be through droplets, um, through blood, um, this, that, and the other. And importantly, it evades the primary host defenses. So first it has to enter the host and it can do that through cuts or adherence to the mucous membrane, bacteria pili. Um, and then it's going to be colonized, this disinfected tissue at the sites of its adherence. The body recognizes it and begins a host response once um, the disease symptoms pop up. So there's going to be inflammation and there's going to be uh, fever. And then there's two routes it can take. It can actually make the disease worse or it can resolve. So this is the chain of infection. The reservoirs are important um, to clean. So it can come from dirty surfaces and equipment, water, whatever. Um, enters, transmission, port of entry, a susceptible host, and then from there it can continue to spread. We can break the chain thanks to um, hygiene, PPEs, food safety, um, cleansing, disinfection, isolation, correct disposal, um, and then uh, just removing or keeping um, the use of catheters and tubes uh, to a minimum. We can prevent all this by immunizations, treatment of the underlying disease. A lot of it is uh, very dependent on patient education. Okay, so first in stage one, um, this is the early infection. This is the viral response phase. Uh, in most people, this would be a fever, coughing, diarrhea, headache to try to expel the pathogen. The signs would be uh, the proliferation of the white uh, blood cells, increased prothrombin time, so in, uh, increased amount of uh, platelets, uh, and decreased D-dimer and LDH. The pulmonary stage is going to be the shortness of breath, hypoxia from the coughing, and uh, there is going to be uh, abnormal chest imaging, so it could be the cloudiness of the lungs. It looks like tr ground glass, or it can be opaque. Um, there is um, transaminitis, so uh, there's going to be like uh, what is it, amines in the lungs, and uh, low to normal procalcitonin. So. In stage three is going to be your hyperinflammatory phase. Uh, this is the most dangerous phase because ARDS, shock, cardiac failure. There's going to be all these signs. So um, we'll we'll go through the treatment later, but um, a lot of them are going to be your like strong antibiotics and then the cortical steroids. Um, your like your um, immunoglobulins uh, and the cytokine inhibitors and the JAK inhibitors. So there's going to be the incubation phase first and then the prodromo. So it's, it's right before the viral response phase. This is like leading up to the actual clinical symptoms. So this part can be acute. Um, if it continues forever, then it's going to be chronic. But in a chronic disease, it generally doesn't reach uh, stage three, right? Um, in this stage, in the pulmonary stage, like. Uh, a secondary infection can come because the patient is now like compromised. Oh, so right here, exposure. So then here would be your like clinical, or no, I'm sorry, clinical. This would be your incubation or prodromal phase. And then once the in symptoms actually start occurring, that's when we actually diagnose. 
So um, the routes of entry are important. Um, they can be sexual, mother-child, inhalation, um, indirect contact, um, uh, like airborne. So like these you should know. Okay, so things that we don't know. Adhesion factors are going to be on the bacteria in order for it to bind to the host epithelium. These can either be the pili, the capsule, and the biofilm. Lipotechoic acid is a certain protein on the cell wall and it has a hydrophobic interaction. Um, okay, so they can have the adhesins that bind to the complement factor in order to inhibit the complement uh, activation cascade. So there's not going to be any lysis of the cell, there's not going to be opsonization. Autolysins are going to um, cause the invasion of the non-professional phagocytes. Um, if it like eats this uh, like Staphylococcus aureus and then it's going to invade the macrocytes. The superantigens are very dangerous because these are uh, immunostimulatory exotoxin. It's going to activate like all the clones of the T cell and trigger like a massive cytokine release, also known as a cytokine storm. Proteases are going to be surface bound and secreted forms um, of the target host immune factors and tissue. So it's, it's um, going to make it like harder for the cell to make these um, immune factors. Uh, it's going to cleave the IgGs and inactivate the effector functions. It can also bind to the immunoglobulins um, ver via the FC chains and immo immobilize the immunoglobulin so it's not going to allow the immune system to work because there's a cancellation of that signal. Leukocytins are secreted virulence factors and they are going to actually kill um, the leukocytes. Okay so the exoenzymes are going to work on the extracellular matrix and those are going to be hyaluronidase and collagenase and they degrade certain tissues in order for the um, bacteria to enter. Um, they are, well, collagenase is going to be your um, tissue degrading enzyme. So these are going to induce phagocytosis and spread within um, the cells. And it doesn't actually leave because the macrophage will come and consume. And then through a process called syncytia, gonna, they're going to form this giant nucleated cell. Okay, so the toxins, endotoxins come from the gram-negative uh, cells. It's actually due to the um, peptidoglycan in the layer between the two cell membranes. Uh, endotoxins are particularly dangerous because they're not, like, they're made from LPS, which doesn't have a vaccine. And it's found on the chromosome of the bacteria. Exotoxins are found in both gram-negative and positive it's a protein, um, so this can be made in a vaccine. This can't be made in a vaccine because it's actually like a, uh, it's like a lipid. So this is also found on the plasmas and phag phagies or phages. So these can be isolated. Okay, so exotoxins are going to be delivered straight into the host cytoplasm, and those include the AB toxins, the membrane damaging toxins, and the super antigens. The AB toxins are made out of two subunits. The B subunit binds to the host cell receptors, so that's going to determine the, the type of host cell that's going to be infected. Once it has bound and entered the cell, the A unit is going to cleave or modify the target molecule, molecule in the cell. And then it's going to be um, presented by MHC2 and then killed by a helper T cell. The ADP ribosylation is going to cause the inactivation or hyperactivation of the target protein. It's going to cleave the rRNA and interfere the elongation factor. So um, a thing that causes it is like neurotoxins. So here we go. The elongation factor is going to be you know inactivated. There's not going to be any protein synthesis. If the G protein is going to be canceled, there's going to be um, like uh, there is going to be a loss of water due to an excess 
secretion of uh, sodium. Uh, amino acids are going to be prevented in, by into making into protein thanks to uh, a shiga toxin, which will cleave the ribosomal RNA, and it's going to cleave uh, prote- protein involved in the release of um, neurotransmitters such as tetanus. Um, okay, so we already went through that. Let's see. Uh, the diphtheria toxin is uh, common in a uh, urinary uh, tract infection, and or no, I'm sorry, this is upper respiratory uh, tract infection, and that can enter the circulation and affect all of these organs, and it's going to be ca- carried by a temperate phag- phage. Sorry, uh, this is problematic because the temperate f- um, temperature is going to be our body's temperature. Uh, exotoxin A is going to cause the pneumonia in cystic fibrosis patients, um, important to remember. The activation of the G protein will increase the AMP, which will increase the respiratory secretion and the mucus production. And that's done by the cholera toxin along with the pertussis to- toxin. Uh, the pertussis bacteria will cause whooping cough. These will cleave the rRNA to inhibit the protein um, synthesis by removing adenine from specific sites. And um, uh, let's see, the shigo verotoxin uh, is going to cause hemolytic uremic syndrome. Okay, so neurotoxins, uh, botulism, they're going to block the snare protein, causing the uh, flaccid paralysis because there's no um, acetyl um, coal enzyme A from, no, not enzyme A, it's just acetylcholine, the neurotransmitter from um, being released. Uh, then the Clostridium tetani is going to block the glycine and the, uh, there should be GABA pathways, and that's going to cause the spastic paralysis because there's not going to be any uptake of uh, the acetylcholine. Membrane disrupting toxins, uh, cytolysin is going to promote the leakage of uh, salt and water. There's going to be pore formation thanks to uh, streptolysin O. It's going to like like force a hole. Um, destruction of the phospholipid bilayer can be due to uh, lecithinicer alpha toxin, which will cause the gas gangrene, and hemolysins and leukocytins will also um, disrupt the membrane. Super antigens bind to uh, MHC two of the macrophages or any other antigen presenting cell, and the um, T cell receptor of the T cell. So it binds like several things and then, or well, like several uh, T cell receptors. So that's going to stimulate a massive polyclonal T cell activation um, and then cytokine storm and then there's going to be shock. Uh, it's going to be toxic shock. It's usually caused by Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pyogenes. Okay, so the exotoxin is going to be delivered by um, a special apparatus. It's like a, like a it's like a needle basically, and it transports the toxins directly into the extracellular spaces. The other ones are going to um, inject the toxins into the target cell using a molecular syringe. Uh, it's a bit different because this is more like a plunger and this is more like a needle. So here you go. It's spreading, dumping our making the pore here, alpha subunit, beta subunit, beta subunit binds to the host cell, then gets like um, endocytosin. And that's how endotoxins are released. So the lipid A, a component of the LPS of the cell wall of gram negative cells are released after the bacteria die. And that acts as the pathogen associated membrane protein to activate the leukocytes, the macrophages, and the B cell polyclonal activation. So in a low concentration, it's going to signal inflammation um, because of the B cell activation and the macrophages. In high concentration, it's dangerous because it leads to the endotoxic shock, uh, the systemic inflammatory response syndrome, ARDS, uh, circular vascular, circular, sorry, cardiovascular death. Okay, so... Bacteria are somewhat smart. They're going to avoid the immune system. 
um, physically through a capsule biofilm toxin and that avoids opsonization or it will cleave the antibodies in contact with the toxin. Capsules are basically to make it slippery. You can't eat it and the biofilms prevent the complement proteins from attaching and the antibodies from activating because there's no complement. Some bacteria bind to the FC region of the IgG to avoid the opsonization. It's going to break apart the, um, the IgG and that's why the body's not able to like recognize it. There can be molecular memory where it mimics um, host tissue, but that kind of like um, it's kind of counterintuitive because the host tissue will still react, but then now it turns into an autoimmune disease. Um, intracellular growth um, that's kind of rare though. That's more for viruses. Antigenic variation, when there is gene rearrangement to switch the phenotype, the translational regulation of alternative genes, and this that in order to avoid um, recognition from the immune system. The pathogenicity islands are several virulence genes that are in one or more DNA sequences, so it's like a nice package when that can be transferred to another bacteria. Um, in an immune response, especially uh, in an excessive immune response, there is going to be a massive amount of tissue damage because of the cytokines, enzymes, and the reactive oxygen species released. So um, it can all culminate into a type 3 hypersensitivity thanks to the deposition of the complexes. That's it for now. Thank you for your attention and good luck studying.